Well, good evening and welcome to the service here at Mountain Avenue Baptist Church. And thankful for the great day that we uh, are having today. And of course, it's a special day as we celebrate Brother Theo's retirement from our, from our ministry and moving on, him and Marbeth moving to Las Vegas or Hendersonville or Henderson. Um, and so we pray for them that God would just bless them as they move on. And, and again, thankful for the fellowship that we had uh, here and the fellowship we'll have in the future as we just serve God in different places and one day we'll be together uh, forever. Um, as we've been studying the life of David, um, we have seen David um, as a shepherd boy being faithful. We saw him tested against the lion and the bear. We saw him go and to the battlefield and kill Goliath and uh, trust God. Is there not a cause? And David sets the pace for us when it comes to a cause, it comes to doing something for God and having a cause in our life and having a purpose. What we have as believers is a great purpose. And uh, we see that in David um, as he kills the giant. He wins the hearts of the nation. You, we know that as just as a young boy, the men of war respected him. Uh, the people respected him. Um, Jonathan, the son of Saul, in line for the throne, uh, became his best friend. And uh, uh, what a blessing that was to see the spirit of David the humility of David, his dedication um, in serving God. This morning, though, we're going to look at David's life from 1 Samuel chapter 24. He's been running from, from Saul uh, and uh, fearful for his life. And we're looking at, his, at this time when David really deals with, with his enemies and David's number one enemy was king, was the king. The king was jealous of him. He had difficulty. And so I, I want you to, uh, just for a few minutes tonight, see how to and, and learn how to deal with, with problems in your life and deal with jealousy and deal with difficulty. And so the title of this message is just dealing with, dealing with difficulties in relationships. And let's bow our heads for prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for tonight. Thank you for this place that we have to worship you, this ministry, celebrating 60 years of ministry um, in this community in September. Thank you for the people through the years that have read the word, and Lord, that you've saved, that you've called, and that you've used. And God, we're just uh, at this time uh, looking to you humbly as we continue the work continue to do what you've called us to do. And may we learn some biblical principles uh, during this lesson that will help us as we deal with people in our lives. We love you and we look to you now in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, we look at David's life. The first thing I want you to notice tonight is the conflicts of David's life, the conflicts. He had conflict. I mean, that was just part of his, of, of being, by the way, part of being a leader is dealing with conflict. And uh, part of getting ready to be a leader is dealing with conflict. And we find in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 18, we've gone over some of these verses, but as a foundation here, we need to, uh, to look at these verses again. And the Bible says in, in 1 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 9, And Saul, I, David from that day forward and forward. So what happened was David's coming into town, they are having a parade, and they are, the, the women are chanting, the people are chanting, uh, they, they have ascribed, uh, or David killed thousands, or 10,000, Saul killed thousands. So David's killed 10,000, Saul's killed thousands. And so they're looking at David as a greater warrior than the king. 
And the Bible says, and Saul eyed David from that day and forward. So Saul began, to, that jealousy began right there in the life of Saul. He doesn't like it. Verse 15 says, Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. So he's watching David. He, uh, he sees that David just keeps doing what's right. David keeps um, doing his job. After Saul throws the javelin, tries to kill him twice, David, the Bible says, behaves himself wisely and just keeps on going. And, and then verse 17 of chapter 18, And Saul said to David, Behold, my elder daughter, Merib, her will I give thee to wife. Only be thou valiant for me, and fight the Lord's battles. For Saul said, Let not, let not mine hand be upon him, but let the hand of the Philistines be upon him. And so he's, he's setting David up. For failure. In verse 21, and Saul said, I will, give, I will give him her, and she may be a snare to him, may, and may be against him. Wherefore Saul said unto David, Thou shalt this day be my son, and my son in law, in the one of the twain. So he's giving him his daughter, his daughter but it's, it's, for the purpose of bringing David down. He's doing a nice thing, but the right, with the wrong motive. He wants to bring David down. In verse 26, the Bible says, And when the servants told David these words, it pleased David well to be the king's son-in-law, and the days were not expired. So David is going along with what Saul says, and what Saul is doing. But make no mistake about it, Saul hated David. He hated David so much. He was everything that Saul was not. He hated David because David walked with God. David walked with the Lord. And King Saul did not. He hated David because David was accepted and, Paul was, and Saul was rejected by God. He was determined. Listen. Saul was determined to put David to death. He was consumed. He was consumed by jealousy and, and hatred. And they were eating at his soul. Jealousy and hatred will eat at the very heart of a man. And that's what was happening to Saul. David was hated, not, by the way, not for the evil in his life, but for the good but because his life was pleasing to God, he was hated. And sometimes that happens to us. Sometimes we have to take the brunt of people's hate and people's unkindness just because we're living for God and they're not. The Bible says in, in Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 and 12, Blessed are ye when men re shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. We can look at the history of the church and the history, and, and we see in the Bible, everybody lived, that lived for God, somewhere along the line, was persecuted. We think about Jesus. <laughs> He was God in the flesh. Jesus just did good, never sinned, never did wrong to a man, never did wrong to a woman, never did wrong. But they hated him so much that they crucified him. And so the Bible says, take up your cross daily because you must take it up because uh, you will suffer. I remember hearing a man preach and he said this, your, your success in life for God is only limited by how much you're willing to suffer. The greater you are, the more suffering you have. The more success you have, the more, the more criticism you have. It's all a part of it. And so if you're going to do something for God and, and do something for the Lord, I love having the, the young men here on our staff and young men uh, that, that serve here. 
to see them get experience and understand that uh, living for God is a battle. It's a battle. It's a battle of good and evil. And we're leading the good by God's grace. And so David was hated. And Saul was looking for him. Saul want, Saul's looking for David. And he hears about where David's hiding. Word comes to Saul. Saul has, has, uh, has uh, spies out there. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 23 and verse number 25, and Saul, and Saul also and his men went to seek him. And they told David, wherefore he came down, came down into a rock and abode in the wilderness of Maon. And when Saul heard, he pursued after David in the wilderness of Maon. And Saul went on this side of the mountain, and David and his men on, on that side of the mountain. And David made haste to get away for fear of Saul. For Saul and his men compassed David and his men and was about to take them. And there came a messenger to Saul, saying, Haste thee, and come, for the Philistines have invaded the land. Wherefore Saul returned from pursuing after David. And so Saul has to leave. Saul has to, he's got David pinned, but because of the Philistines, he's got to retreat from that and, go, and really go and fight for the country. So that's what saved David at that point. And so Saul is going after him. Saul is pursuing him. The Bible says. And then again, Saul locates David again, and, and uh, is seeking to find him, and seeking to destroy him. The Bible says, then, uh, in Luke chapter 17 and verse 1, Then said he unto his disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses shall come. But woe unto him through whom they come. So, you're going to have offenses. You're going to have problems. Saul's chasing David. Saul's after him. And there'll, be, there'll come times in your life where you feel like the people that don't like you will, are on a hunt for you, out to destroy you. It may be at work. They're just looking for, something for, for you to do something wrong. It may be at school. You may be a Christian school kid, and, and the, you, you strive to do right, and the other kids that don't want to do right are looking for things in your life. You see, the greater you live for God and the more you live for God and the people that are jealous of you will try to find faults in you. And so this is what's happening in David's life. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12, Yea, all, listen, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. John chapter 15 and verse 20, or John 15 and verse 12, This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Hmm. So what is that saying? Jesus is saying when those that persecute us and those that cause difficulty for us we're to love them. We're to, to not allow uh, a bitter spirit to come, among, to come into our heart. We've all been hurt. We've all had people say things about us. We've all had, I don't want to know, but I bet probably everybody has been critical of me at one time or another. But that's just part of being the leader. Well, the service is too long. Well, it's too short. What are we going to do here? What are we going to do there? So we're, we're all going to be criticized when we're in places of leadership. And then sometimes you'll, you'll have somebody that really, really is against you. I'm thankful that I don't think anybody like that is in our ministry right now. I don't believe, but I'm always, I'm never surprised 
never surprised. And so David had conflict. Then we see, secondly, the confusion of, of David's life. The confusion is just, what's going on? What's happening? We find in, in uh, chapter 24, in verse, verse number 3, and it, came, and it came to the sheep goats, and there was a cave, and David went in to cover his feet, and David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. And the men said, Behold, the day uh, that which, which the Lord hath said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand, that thou mayest do to him what shall be good unto thee. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of, of, Shob's, of Saul's robe privily. And so David now, he, he's being again pursued by Saul. Saul comes into the very cave and he's asleep, and David goes to him where he's at, and he could have killed him. The king's there. It's his enemy. He's, Saul's his enemy. He's in the same cave where David and his men were hiding. And it seems to the men that God has given him, David, the opportunity to kill Saul. But wait a minute. Saul's, Saul is the king. And David respects him as the king. Verse number 10, the Bible says, Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how the Lord hath delivered thee today into mine hand in the cave. And some bade me kill thee. He's talking to Saul. But mine eye spared thee. And I said, I will not put forth mine hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. He's still king, and David had respect for that. And so his men wanted him to kill him. His heart said no. His conscience said no. I cannot kill the king. And God spoke to David. And so we have to be careful Sometimes our enemy, our enemies have a weakness, and sometimes our enemies falter. Boy, we could just jump on them. We can just, uh, you know, say, I told you, and, and attack that person. But the Bible says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. We don't have to attack those that are weakened by sin and difficulty and try to destroy them when they're down. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 and verse 7, He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought forth as a lamb to the slaughter, and a sheep before a shear, as, as a sheep before a shears is dumb, he opened us, openeth not his mouth. What did Jesus do? Nothing. When he was arresting, he arrested, he did nothing. He was God. He was God in the flesh. And, and, and Jesus said in Matthew 26 and verse 53, Thinkest thou not that I can't pray to my Father right now? Jesus has been arrested. They're going to crucify him. And he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. You see, Jesus had the power, but it was God's will for him to die. And sometimes we have the power over our enemies. But that doesn't mean we have to lash out against our enemies. Jesus set the example for us. David was a tremendous example for us. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 23. Who then, that was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, Jesus, when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Jesus was on a mission. Jesus was here to die for the sins of men. Jesus was not here to seek revenge against those who came up against him. He loved them, and he wanted to give them a chance to come to him. And so David's men are saying, hey, kill the king. Kill him now. Take care of him now. And David is saying, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to get even. I'm not getting even with Saul. 
And that's what we have to do, church. We have to just let God deal with things. We don't need to get even. We just need to live for God. We don't need to respond back. We just need to look to him. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 19 through 21, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give, give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. That's how you overcome evil. It's with good. It's with doing good. Being kind. Being helpful. It's God's plan. That, that is the way to peace for you and for the ministry that God gives you. Whether it's your family, whether it's your friendships at work, whether it's the church family, we don't get even. And then we see the character of David's life, the character of his life. David had a chance to kill Saul, but he didn't. He refused to do it. He cuts off a piece of Saul's robe just to show robe, uh, Saul that he was there. But even that, he felt bad about that. He apologized to the king for cutting that piece off of his robe because it was, he felt it was disrespectful. And so David apologizes. But notice, if you would, with me, in Romans 14, 4, the Bible says, Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his master he standeth or falleth. What is he saying? What's that verse saying? What is David saying? David's not going to judge Saul because God's going to judge Saul. David doesn't have to respond to Saul because God will take care of Saul. And it's the same with us. We don't judge this person or that person. God will take care of it. God will do it. And that's what we have to look to. Sometimes we'll get hurt. And it's hard to understand why some people are, are, are bent on hurting other people. But that's just the way it is. Some people just have a mean spirit about them. But that's not the way we're to act. When we think about David, David took the first step. He went to Saul. He humbled himself before Saul in verse number 8. He talks to him, my Lord, my king. When Saul looked behind him, David stooped his face to the earth and bowed himself. David bows down to Saul in verse 8 of chapter 24. Verses 9 through 11, he just speaks the truth. David declares his own guilt. I cut off a piece of your garment. But David was committed to doing the right thing. And David, David was really looking to God. He's the judge. He takes care. And so it is. And same thing with us. When you have an offense, go to the person. Somebody's offended you, go to the person. Get it settled. Do it humbly. When you deal with the offending party, do it humbly. And if there's some guilt in the, and, and you have done something that may have caused the, the problem, then admit it. Admit it. And then give forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness. You, when you ask for forgiveness, you don't know what the person's going to do. But you can give forgiveness to them. You can decide that. You decide. Always be committed to doing the right thing. No matter what anybody else does. We can't control what other people do. But we can control what we do. God is in control. We serve God. He takes care of us. We have to look to him. Sometimes people will, will try to make our lives harder and difficult. Again, whether it's at work, whether it's sometime in the family, you become a Christian and people aren't. Your friends, you become a Christian, some of your friends aren't. 
Just look to God and follow him. And God will bless you. God has a great plan for you. God has a great plan for us. But as we move forward, as, as individuals, with our families, with our friendships, with our, our church family, there's going to be, at times, offenses. There's going to be, at times, people trying to knock us down. But let's just do what David did. Let's have the character of David. Let's follow the example of Jesus and look to him. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your love for us. Guide us now. Bless, I pray, in every way. Lord, if there's one listening to this service tonight, or whenever somebody take, comes on and listens, I pray, Lord, if there's one that's not saved, they're not sure of their salvation, they would open their heart to Jesus Christ, ask forgiveness for their sins, and trust in him to give them salvation. And Lord, for the believer, the Christian, God, help them as they deal with offenses. Help them that what they deal with, with problems. God, give us hearts of forgiveness. We love you, Lord, and we look to you now. Bless, I pray, our church, our ministry, as we move forward with the power of the Holy Spirit. Use us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. Have a great uh, uh, evening. And we look forward to seeing you Wednesday night and then again next Sunday. May God bless you now. Thank you for tuning in.